go to wars that we don't need. And don't tell, bring them back and then treat them as cripples when in fact they need to be helped. And give our entrepreneurs a chance to grow in this country. We're a wonderful country, but we don't get that sense. We don't need this kind of leadership. And I, I'm going to the young and to the youth and to your audience to say, I want you to expect, express yourself once again on the Twitter, on the Internet. Defy what they say. Question them. Keep on doing what you've done, Alex, because you've become a very important thorn on the side of this entire politicized intelligence and military community and the elites. Believe me, as much as they call us wacky and, you know, right wing or whatever, they cannot, cannot avoid what we're doing. All of this that's happening now, Alex, quite frankly, is because of what you did 10 years ago. This is what the intelligence community can't get around. Because the minute I said that was a lie, and I predicted 10 years from now that would be used as an excuse. Osama bin Laden. You did. They have to contrive all of this nonsense and spend billions of dollars because of thanks to a man called Alex Jones. Oh, no, no. But let's let's just, well, thanks to you. But let's just, let's just stop right there with my final question because it's incredible. You're yeah. leading into each point before I even knew I was going to get there. All over the country, radio talk show hosts with even good-sized audiences. We talked to one on the radio yesterday. And this other Marine who had no criminal record, combat veteran, uh, uh, honorably discharged, the Rutherford Institute, we had the lawyer on earlier, got him out. They're having 20,000 involuntary commitments now. And they said, because he said 9-11 was an inside job, that he was mentally ill and came with the FBI and grabbed him. Now, now after a week, they've released him. But, but the point is, is they're doing this to veterans and taking their guns now, and it it's a huge chilling effect, so I want to ask you about that and psychiatry as a tyranny, and then I want to ask you, why are we still alive? I mean, what you said earlier, that quick gestalt, is true. People think I'm trying to scare them. Some, no, no, no. I believe people have courage, and that if you know the truth, you'll want to make preparation for it, as Patrick Henry said. I believe that if I have courage, it will spur others to have courage, and I believe that if they kill me, I don't want to die, but that's that's a good death because these are a bunch of degenerate scum. I mean, I don't understand people that say they could come get us. They're going to get us if we don't stand against them. They're going to get us if we don't stand up and fight. I fear the fear. I fear letting them win. I, and, 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 and that's not courage. That's basic survival instinct. For me, that's a default position. Well, yeah, it's true, but on the other hand, one voice in the dark, as you said, no matter how you said it and how loud, is a defiant voice with the system. Remember, it's not one person who's going to come. The most dangerous person in the world is never the group. It's the man alone or the woman alone. Ibsen one wrote, wrote it about the master builder in one of his plays, and that's what you are. You're the man alone. You happen to build an audience of 10 to 15 million listeners. The intelligence community listens to you. The White House listens to you now. The military listens to you. And they're afraid. And remember what I said to you. Politicians and military men who all have to be in groups, by nature, they're fearful. So the only way they can promote themselves is not by claiming that they're greater or better. They have to suck up to someone else. It's always being pandering to the top and being... Uh, dominant authoritarian to the bottom. And that's the nature of the systems. And so, in fact, when the individual can defy the systems and they claim that 9-11 is an inside job and they get put in psychiatric hospitals, then we're going into the Soviet system, where they're starting to use that again, by the way. The Russians are starting to use the psychiatric hospitals for Soviet dissidents, which is what I wrote about in my first book, The Mind Palace. If America starts to do that, there will be violence in the streets. What the system doesn't understand is that we still have the Second Amendment. We still have men and women who have fought for our country, and they're not afraid to fight. We're Let me Europe. ask you this question. We're not France. We're not Italy. We're not Spain. We're America. And the system is beginning to understand that if they push us too far, there will be bloodshed in the likes of which they have never seen. The fear they have of me has to do with the fear that I know each one of them. I know where they are. I know how they move. I know where they're going to move. They know that. But also is that I don't fear them, nor do you fear them. The answer the American can no longer fear the TSA agent who goes in and takes the product from his or her luggage 
or steals my, for example, drugs, and they're not brought accountable. We have a whole system now out of control. Sure. The GSA, the lowest level of people giving the highest security, screening us for a terror that doesn't exist. Sure. It's absurd. Let me, let me, in closing, ask you this, because right before, right before uh, you um, came on, my wife talked to me for about three minutes uh, during the break, and uh, we got home yesterday and noticed the door was open to the house. We live in the country, and the alarm hadn't gone off, so they, they – and, and, and then I said, well, you know, so obviously they want to know that, us to know they've been in the house. And then we, she noticed the air conditioner wasn't working, but it was on. So she had the air conditioner company come out. And uh, he's a guy that installed air conditioners, you know, a year ago for us. So, you know, he's a listener. And he goes, I want to show you this. And he went in there and showed her in the crawl spaces. Somebody came in my house and cut through the, the uh, you know, the tubing that, that, that sends the air conditioning, the central heating, cooling. What kind of message is that to break in my house and then go in and cleanly slice in crawl spaces the air conditioned hosing? I mean, what is that? Well, I don't know what that is, but if are you in fear? Are you monitored? Of course you are, Alex. So am I. I mean, you no, but I mean, if they that. think that scared me, I, I mean, wow, I must. I mean, it kind of feels good, actually. I mean, whatever they do, I guess they got to do it. I, I, I just, I right. mean, what do they think? That's it's like a riddle for me to discover it and then and then find out they were in my house. I mean, what does that even mean? Well, I, I, first of all, let's let's be a little bit more objective about what who they are. Most of the systems, the FBI, the CIA, all of them, they're good people. They're some very good people. They're not interested in, in doing anything in monitoring Americans or doing anything but their jobs. The problem is you've got the bad apples and you've got the politicized ones who are self-aggrandizing, particularly in the military that has more generals than we have soldiers. It's out of control. Our military industrial complex is out of our But I mean, you were a former psych warfare head of the, of the State Department. What does breaking in someone's house and cutting the uh, thinly slicing, you know, the, the, the shiny tinfoil style, you know, tubing that goes through the house, whatever you call that. From a psychological warfare, if I were somebody doing that, it wouldn't do very much. If I had to take down Alex Jones, I would shut you off on the air. That's what I would do. But I don't think they're going to shut you down, Alex. You have too big an audience. You know, my if gut tells me, against... my gut tells me it's some kind of uh, government watchdog type group. You know, groups that the government has that watch extremists. My gut tells me, because they've been talking trash about me lately, that that's the type of stuff p people would do. I mean, it, it's probably some non-governmental Merck minion group is what I think. Well, I don't know. I mean, listen, you live in Austin, Texas. You've got a lot of high security jobs there. You've got a lot of military industrial complex, but also you have a lot of people who care about you and your welfare. So I think you're going to be surprised how many people in the intelligence, the military and the security uh, world really care about you and will protect you. And that's not going to happen that easily. But my point is that we're still coming to a problem where we have political elites that are not consistent with the quality of what we need in America. And we need people who care about this country, who serve this country, and who can say what is the truth, what is required, and just be very practical without needing to self-aggrandize, to lie, and to send men to war for their own self-aggrandize. It's, it's as simple as that. It I is. Well, it you know, in the final simple. equation, um, anything else you'd like to add, uh, Doc? We really appreciate you and your time. Yes, I have gave great faith in my country. I have great faith in the American people and those who listen to you and those who believe in the, the Democrats, the Republicans, and the fact that tomorrow we are able to fail, get up again, and start another business. And God bless this country, and God bless what we do. But we're not stupid. And I have a great faith in our country and our ability to say, you know, all of this stuff about Osama bin Laden and the election and the books is nonsense. And it, it, it's degrading. And they will eventually react to it. You look at the blogs. You listen to the Internet. You see what they say. Avoid the TV. Avoid the rest of the nonsense. And you will come back to the truth. And I have full faith in you, and I appreciate what you do, Alex. And well, I appreciate you. And, and – um... And uh, thank you for giving me your take on that final issue. I know it sounds wild. I, I can't even figure out what, what, what no, the point is. it's not, Alex. It's, you know, you live a life which is filled with a lot of excitement, and there's a life of also some danger. I mean, that's part of the price you pay for what you do.
you know it. Your wife knows it, unfortunately. And you and I know that. I find uh, it exhilarating, though. I guess that's kind of sick in a way. I, 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 well, not really. I mean, that's better than riding in a NASCAR a car around than 200 miles an hour around a racetrack. So that's better. You're much better shape than you like to tell me, Alex. <laughs> You're very healthy, Alex. <laughs> All right, Dr. Pachinik, stevepachinik.com. Um, please join us again soon. Thank you for uh, talking to us. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, Artie. All right, Bye. tell him thank you. Guys, that's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. And, you know, I was sitting there thinking about, should I talk about this? Because we're like, why is the door open? Why did the alarm not go off? And then we learn, well, the air conditioner's on, but there's no AC. And the guy comes out and goes, somebody's cut your AC. The thing's in the walls and in the ceiling. And, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Uh, and, and I don't know what that message is. Uh, okay, you're in my house. That, that's great. I mean, you know, and I got an iPhone right here that I know you're listening to. Just what a bunch of sick criminals, man. You people are nuts. And, and I would just add, the people above you, they hate you. I mean, they're putting fluoride in your water too, Jack. Uh, so we've definitely got their attention, though. And uh, it, it is so strange to really realize that we are one of the few groups that really has our finger on the pulse of what's going on and that all this stuff is unfolding and coming true right in front of us. And uh, we're living history. I don't know how anybody, I don't know how anybody uh, wouldn't be blown away right now by just people that say they're bored, who say that life is boring and it's, that's because you're watching television all day or not reading what's happening in the world or not involved. There are huge world events taking place right now. Uh, by the way, uh, by the time you see this, it'll probably be sold out. You can go to InfoWarsShop.com or InfoWars.com and try to get it. We printed an extra 40,000 of these, thinking that would, well, 20,000 at first, thinking it would um, be enough for people that wanted to order them at cost uh, in bulk. And we sold 20,000 out in like a day, and, and, and now we've sold most of that additional uh, 20,000 that we did have. So uh, go check InfoWarsShop.com, and if it's still up there, because it's computerized, it'll know when we're out. Uh, that'll still be there, and you'll still be uh, able to buy it. And, and, and that's it. I'm not, I, I can't print more of the first issue. 50,000 on the streets of Austin, now an additional 40,000 printed just to mail out to people in bulk, because our shipping department can't handle it. Uh, so that's it. I mean, that's uh, if, if you want a free e-copy, sign up at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. That's InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. And uh, we will continue over the next few days to send out a free copy with a daily email blast that has videos and breaking news to your inbox. Because you can, you, the way the digital system works is you can even turn the page. And you can like zoom in on things. You can click on, you can click on links. So it's, it's not as tactile as being able to touch it. But uh, Web 2.0 is here. Rome burned, will we, economic collapse, um, peace. And I want to thank uh, all of our guests. I want to thank uh, the head of the Rutherford Institute, Mr. Whitehead. I want to thank, uh, of course, Dr. Steve Pachinik. And I want to thank our first guest of the night who was in studio after I did the news, good old Dan Bedondi, one of our new reporters. And he's also over there helping produce the radio show with uh, Chris Alanese and uh, CJ and, of course, John Bowne and all of the great crew that's here. we got Jakari Jackson on camera because that's how it works. Everybody does everything around here. And if they kill me, you guys are going to be in the command seat. So get ready. And I've got my will ready and all that stuff's being, been set up uh, for that. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be a real victory if they kill me. That shows it because that'll wake up a lot of folks. I don't want to die, but uh, we're definitely moving in the right direction here. All right, that's it for InfoWars Nightly News. We'll see you back on the radio tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, Lord willing, and right here at night.